So hello everyone, this is Gene Trowbridge. This is our Facebook post for uh, TLG, Trowbridge Law Group. We're a law firm specializing in writing uh, documents for uh, private placement offerings, uh, Regulation D, Rule 506, and uh, Regulation A and A+, and Crowd funding, regulation, crowdfunding. Today, I want to continue and talk about the questions that I get during the week. And I got a question this week that said, hey, I know about the change in uh, the accredited investor definition where there are a few more uh, groups that are now considered accredited, but are there any other changes to Regulation D uh, that came about? And yes, there are a few and I'll cover them today. First of all, changes to Regulation D uh, would be in Rule 504. Rule 504 has always been around and it's always been uh, a rule where you can raise up to $5 million a year. They just changed the rule to $10 million a year, which they think might promote capital formation. But here's the problem with the 504, which we, we I haven't written a 504 offering in, in 20 years, I'm sure. Uh, 504 is not preempted from state regulations. So that what that means is if you're going to do a 504, you put all your documents together and you say, you know, I've got some investors from Indiana. So you go to Indiana and figure out what are Indiana's rules. Can you have sophisticated investors? Uh, what can you actually raise? The state rules uh, trump everything and you have to follow their rules. Now that's okay if you're only going to raise in Indiana, but if you go to, unless Indiana says you can only raise 5 million, well, you have to follow their rules. Uh, then if you want to raise money from Idaho, you have to go into Idaho and check their rules. So it gets quite confusing. And this is what we talk about or you hear about discussed as the blue sky. Are there blue sky requirements? Are we going into each individual state before we raise any money? and get approval from their state reg regulators. So um, even though it's $10 million, there are very few uh, situations where you might want to do a uh, 504. I could think of uh, one situation. California does allow some advertising in an offering that's offered just in the state. And then there are some other states that might allow some advertising. So maybe with two states, you could take your offerings in and get them approved. And under uh, 504, you could do your offering. Uh, but it, it is cumbersome. There's no question about that. Changes to Rule 506B. The biggest thing would be the integration. In, in the uh, prior to this change, if you did a 506B offering and you accepted sophisticated investors, there's a rule that you can only have 35. So now you wanna do your second offering. How do you know that the government isn't gonna combine your second offering with your first offering and then you blow your 35 investor rule? Well, in the old days, it was a six month um, safe harbor rule. If your second offering was at least six months after your first offering, they wouldn't integrate them. Now that rule has changed. And the rule specifically for 506B is you can, you can have two offerings close together, closer than that six months. But the rule is no more than 35 sophisticated investors from one issuer in a 90-day period of time. So that's, uh, uh, that's something that you're, when you work with your attorney and you're putting your offerings together and you're thinking about what did you do last and what are you doing in the future, you should have a talk about how this 90-day rule might apply to you. Now, there's a change in Rule 506C. I said earlier that we all know right now about the change in the accredited investor definition where security brokers are now accredited and we can have the spousal equivalency and things like that. We know about that, but here's a brand new one that came out. When you're doing a 506C, you have to take steps to be reasonably assured that your investors are accredited. You can advertise to anyone. 
But before you take an investor, generally you go through a third party verification process to see if the investor is accredited. Well, that can be burdensome if you're having multiple offerings frequently. Uh, the old rule was that accreditation was only good for 90 days. So you'd have to do it over and over and over. Now it says that the issuer may rely on a previous third party verification of an accredited investor status based on a representation from the investor and knowledge on the part of the issuer that the investor is still accredited. So if you're doing a series of 506 Cs, you get your investor accredited the first time through a third party. And then you know six months later, you come out with a new investment uh, and you're looking for accredited investors that previous verification will, uh, will be valid. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I think that rule applies to a five year period of time, but I couldn't find that. So I'm, I'm, we'll, uh, your attorney will help you on how long that additional verification period is. And then in 506B, another change of 506B, which probably won't affect any of you, it changes the disclosure rules. You know, in, in Regulation D, Rule 502 says that you have to have a PPM. You have to disclose all of the uh, material facts. Well, there's a change to Rule 502 when it relates to a 506B offering. That confusing? Okay. So there's a change when you're doing a 506B offering to the disclosure requirements. And the change, hopefully it won't apply to anyone, is if you're raising, raising more than $20 million in your 506B offering and there are some sophisticated investors, just one sophisticated investor, you would have to have audited financial statements if the amount you're raising is over $20 million. So in your 506B offering, where you're accepting sophisticated investors and you're raising over uh, $20 million, there's gonna be a requirement in your PPM, in your disclosure for audited financial statements. And your attorney will tell you what has to be audited and whatever, but it's a, a higher burden of disclosure. Now, I'll tell you, 506B is the most popular way that private placements are done. During the last 12 months, the SEC says there was about $1.7 trillion in 506B offerings. So that's it, my gosh, is this gonna be a real burden? But the fact is, the vast majority of 506B offerings don't have sophisticated investors. Our most uh, prolific client, where we've done 128 offerings since 2014, does 506B over and over and over. No sophisticated investor. Every investor is accredited. They do PPMs. We don't believe that they'd be... Uh, Plus they don't do anything over 20 million. We don't believe that they would be impacted by this rule. So this is something your attorney would talk to you when you're talking about the deal, what I call it the deal structure interview. When we get down and talk about the facts, I'd be able to discuss this with you if there's any increased disclosure on your part. So those are the changes in rule uh, in uh, Reg D that you may not have heard of because everyone's been concentrating on the change in the definitions of a credit and investor. So that's really the end of this podcast. If you have any questions, you can call us 949-570-1507. That's 949-570-1507. Or you can email me directly, gene at trowbridgelawgroup.com. And don't forget to go to our uh, YouTube channel, Trowbridge slash, <laughs> YouTube slash Trowbridge Law. We have all sorts of good things on there, interviews with uh, syndicators and past uh, uh, versions of our Trowbridge Talks, uh, where Jonathan and I talk about questions that we get every week. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time on the uh, a Trowbridge Law Group Facebook post. Mm -hmm.